the kingdom of my divine will in the midst of creatures book of heaven volume 36 part 6 june 5th 1938 the sign of whether the creature lives in the divine will is in feeling its life within herself its operating act which is the greatest gift ever given to the creature centralization of god in the creature and of the creature in god i continue my flight in the divine will and i feel its desire to breathe palpitate move and think in me it seems to be putting aside its immensity its height depth and power to become smaller in me to do what i do it seems to delight in lowering itself to my level breathing as i do palpitating and moving in my motion but still keeping its immensity and power which invests and surrounds everything outside of me therefore while my mind wanted to enjoy the divine will inside of me it also wanted to go outside to travel all over its immensity, power, height, and depth. I could find no frontiers, nothing other than abyss of light, with no bottom and no height, completely boundless. While my mind was getting lost, my sweet Jesus, visiting my little soul, all goodness told me my little daughter of my volition my will invests and involves everything and everyone it possesses all in its womb of light and nothing can escape it all live in it although they do not recognize it as source of life motion step warmth and even breath. We can say that every creature lives in our will as though in our house. We give her what she needs. We feed her with paternal tenderness. But she does not recognize us. Many times she attributes to herself what we are actually doing. She even reaches the point of offending the one who is giving her life and preserving her. We can say that we keep many enemies in our house who live at our expense, stealing our goods. Our love is such that it forces us to give them life, to feed them as if they were our friends. How painful it is that our will serves as residence for those who do not recognize us and who offend us. They stay in it by right of creation because of our immensity. If they didn't want to be in our will, there would still be no other place for them, since our will is everywhere in heaven and earth. Now, in order for the creature to claim that she lives in our will, she must want it and recognize it. Because by wanting it, she feels that everything is will of God for her. And by recognizing it, she feels our operating act over her. This is the living in my will feeling our operating power inside and outside of herself and operating together with it. If she feels we love, she loves together with us. If we want to make ourselves more known, she is all attentive to listen and receive with love the new life of our knowledge. 
in some. She feels our operating life, and she wants to do, and does, whatever we do, following us in everything. This is living in our will, feeling our life that gives life to her, feeling our operating act moving, breathing, working in her being. These are our celestial inhabitants, the glory in our house. We live as children and father. All that is ours is theirs, but they do indeed recognize it. They are not blind thieves who have no eyes to look at our light or ears to listen to our paternal attentions and who do not feel our operating act over them. On the contrary, those who live in our will feel through our operating act. And this is the greatest gift that we can give to the creature. Therefore, be attentive. Recognize that your life comes from us, that we give you all breathing and motion to live together with you. After this, I kept thinking of the great wonders of the divine will. How many surprises! How many unheard of prodigies that only the divine fiat could do! Then my always adorable Jesus, coming back, added, My blessed daughter, I did the creation and all the creatures to form my delights in them, to express from our supreme being the excesses of our love, and the marvelous power of our works. If we delighted so much in creating so many different things in the order of creation, having to serve man, we delighted even more in doing unheard of prodigies, works never before considered, enrapturing beauties for the one who had to serve us, man the prime act of creation. We were to be always so delighted in him as to keep us always busy, doing as many things as we could for him. He, on the other side, was supposed to remain always with us, to love us and let himself be loved, receiving the great wonders of our works. It was his escape from our will that stopped our delights and the course of the works that with so much love we wanted to do for man. But what we established has to be accomplished. And this is why we come back fighting, calling the creatures to live in our will, to let all that has been decreed and established be punctually accomplished. Now, you must know that as the soul does her acts in our will, our love is such that we centralize our supreme being in her, together with all our works. Oh, what delights and joys we feel in seeing our dominating majesty in her, surrounded by all our works. The angels and saints pour into her to honor their creator, because everybody runs where God is and wants their place of honor around us. But while everything is centralized in her, an even greater wonder occurs. The creature is centralized in everybody. She reaches the center of each created thing. Our will loves her so much that it multiplies her and gives her a place wherever it is, keeping her close in all its works. 
We just cannot stay without this creature who lives in our will. We would have to split our will in two. But our will cannot be divided. It is always one, and one single act. Furthermore, if we put aside one who lives in our will, our own love would wage a war against us. Rather, the reason for which we want her to live in our will is that we want her with us, to show her our works, to make her feel the heartbeats and the notes of our love. From afar, our works cannot be known and our love cannot be felt. So we need to be with her, to love each other, to know each other, and to work. Otherwise, the creature goes on her way, and we on ours, remaining deprived of our delights and of the freedom to do what we want, in absolute pain. Therefore be attentive, live always in our will, if you want us to live in you, and you within us. Fiat. June 12, 1938. The Truth, Bearer of Divine Seeds. How Knowledge Forms New Divine Lives. The glory that the soul will receive in return in heaven. One who lives abandoned in Jesus' arms is his favorite. I am always returning to the divine volition. Its immensity is such that while I am in the middle of its ocean, trying in vain to embrace all its acts, since it takes centuries to do it, and still they would not be enough to embrace all its acts. I seem to come back to my smallness. So while I was wandering in the fiat, my sweet Jesus, who needs the love of those who want to live in his will, told me, my blessed daughter, it is only when I speak about my will that my love can find peace and that it calms down from its anxiety and delirium. In the word, in the truth I manifest, it finds sweet rest because it sees its love taking place in the creatures in order to receive love in return and form its life. It is necessary to manifest the merits and the goods contained in it in order to attract and enchant the creature to live in it. Otherwise, they won't move. Now you must know that every knowledge I manifest and every act done in my will with the cortege of the knowledge I have manifested is a divine seed that the soul acquires. This seed will produce new divine science. And oh, how she will be able to speak the language of her creator. Each truth will be a new celestial language, which shall have the virtue of making itself understood by those who listen to it and want to receive this divine seed. This seed will produce new life of sanctity, new love, new goodness, new joys and happiness. These seeds of my truth will be as many divine properties that the soul will acquire. The joy we receive when the soul operates in our will is such 
that we communicate it to all the blessed. You must know that as many are the divine seeds which the soul acquires by knowledge of my fiat, so many more degrees of our knowledge and glory will we extend to her when, having finished her life down here, she will come to our heavenly fatherland. To each knowledge acquired on earth, will correspond a double knowledge of our supreme entity in our celestial residence. To each divine seed, a degree of glory, joy, and happiness. Therefore, the happiness, joy, and glory of the blessed will be in proportion to how much they will have known us. Consider, for example, a man who did not study different languages. In hearing them being spoken, he will not understand a thing. Moreover, he certainly could not be employed as a teacher of these languages to let him earn a higher salary. He will only be able to teach the little he knows and earn little money. In the same way, if men do not know us on earth, they won't make enough room in their souls to be able to receive all our joy and happiness. Even if we desire to give it to them, it would just not fit and they would not understand anything. Therefore, the glory of the blessed will correspond to how many acts in our will they have done. Glory and joy will be higher the more knowledge they acquired. This can make the blessed reach such a height that all the celestial court will be amazed because each additional knowledge is a new divine life that the soul acquires, a life with infinite goods and joys. Do you think it's nothing for the souls to possess many of our new divine lives as our own property? What we will not give of joy, happiness, and love in return for these new divine lives that she possesses. We long for our children, who will live in our will, to make ourselves known on earth, since it will be their teacher of the new sciences of their creator, and will make them beautiful, wise, holy, and noble according to the knowledge acquired. We await them in our celestial court to inundate them with our new joys, beauties, and happiness, which we have not been able to give until now. And since in heaven all the blessed are bound together as a family, loving each other in a perfect way, they will all participate in the glory and joy of these children, not as direct glory and joy, but in an indirect way, thanks to the bond of love among themselves. So, we want our will to be known on earth in order to show, from the depth of our divine womb, new, infinite joys and happiness to those who live in it. Then he added with unspeakable tenderness, My good daughter, I love creatures very much, but I feel more captured, won, and attracted to love the soul that lives abandoned in my arms as if she had nobody in the world, only her Jesus. 
trusting me and me only. If she is offered other kinds of support, she refuses them to have only the support of her Jesus, who holds her tightly in his arms, defending her and taking care of her completely. These are the souls that I love very, very much, my favorite ones. I surround them with my divine power. I build around them the wall of my love. Woe to those who touch them. My love will know how to defend them, and my power will know how to topple those who want to displease her. The souls abandoned in me live only of me, and I of them, as if we lived on one breath and one love. If some human support arises, they look into it to see if I'm there, and if I'm not, they run away to find shelter in my arms. Only these are the souls I can really trust, confide to them my secrets, and lean on them as well. I am certain that they do not get out of my will, because they are always with me. The one who does not live abandoned in me, instead, runs away from my arms. She does not refuse human supports. Rather, she gets a taste for them. She is inconstant. One moment she looks for me, another for creatures. She is forced to feel the disillusion from creatures, which opens deep gashes in the soul. And she feels the earth in her heart. My will as life, far away from herself. Oh, if everybody abandoned themselves in my arms, the earth would disappear for them. They wouldn't pay attention to anybody. I would be enough for all. I love so much the one who lives abandoned in my arms that I show her the greatest excesses of my love. My love jokes. My caresses. I reach the point of inventing new love tricks to keep them busy and centered in my love. Therefore, live abandoned in my arms, and in everything you will find your Jesus defending, helping, and sustaining you. Fiat. June 16th, 1938. How the Divine Will always wants to give and receive from the creatures. Mutual exchange. Rights that are lost, an empire acquired. How God finds everything in one act done in His will. Continuing my flight in the divine will, I feel it doesn't give me time. Always wanting to give me of itself and to receive what is mine. If I do not know what to give, being just nothing, it wants my will again and again. This is its feast, receiving the will of the creature as a gift, and if necessary, receiving always the same thing it gave, 
happy to give these back again, redoubled with new love, light, and sanctity. Divine will, how much you love me. Oh, how much I'd like to love you in return. I felt completely immersed in the fiat when my always adorable Jesus, visiting my little soul, all goodness said, My little daughter of my will, you don't know how far my love goes for the soul who lives in it. How many new things I'm up to, taking her by new surprises, always having something to do with her and always keeping her captured by me. I don't give her time. Now I tell her a truth. Now I give her a gift. Now I show her our enrapturing beauty and our whispering, burning, delirious love that wants love in return. In sum, I just don't give her time. And what I want the most, and always, is for her not to give me time either. Listen to what I do. In order, always, to give and receive, I call the creature to live in my will, and I offer her its sanctity, light, life, love, and infinite joys, as much as she can contain them. After a while, finding her loyal, I go to her and I say, Give me back what I gave to you. She promptly delivers everything, without hesitating an instant, to show me how much she loves me. Even her breath, her heartbeat, her motion, everything. She gives me everything, not keeping anything for herself. Rather, she is happy to give all to her Jesus, and I take it all. I look and look again at what she gave me to delight and amuse myself with her gifts. Then I put them inside my heart to enjoy them as the property of my daughter. But do you think I remain satisfied? For the creature I am, but not for myself. Never. My love does not give me peace. It swells up. It overflows, driving me to the greatest excesses. And do you know what I do? I give my whole being to my beloved creature. I double everything she gave me. I give her doubled love, light, sanctity, my breath, my motion, my very life, so that I breathe in her breathing. I move in her motion. I love in her love. There is nothing I don't do within her. I just do not want to do anything without her. I would feel as if I didn't love her in all my things, and this would be unbearable. I must give all to the one who gave me all. Do you think it's nothing that your Jesus gives you his life to let you live in me, asking for your life to live within you? Trying almost to find ever new excuses to give and to receive, to have a chance to tell you the long story of my will and my eternal love story. This is not just to give you simple news, to show you how good, holy, and powerful I am. 
but to actually provide you with my love, will, sanctity, goodness, and beauty. Isn't such an excessive love almost unbelievable? Just by wanting to always keep her with me, I show my great love. I give her something of myself, since she possesses nothing by herself that is worthy of me. Then, making it her own, she can say, You gave to me, and I give to you. Isn't this the kind of love to break and move even the hardest hearts? Only your Jesus can love in this way. Only your Jesus knows how to love in this way. Nobody can claim to be able to reach me in love. I myself do it for one who lives in my will. Every act she does in it is like a sun rising in fullness of glory and sanctity. I take shelter in these suns to delight and rest. Then I find my beloved creature all immersed in these suns. She looks so beautiful to me. Moreover, by living in my will, there is nothing human in her. She loses the rights on her will and on all that is human. All rights over her will become ours, while she acquires the rule over all that is divine. Oh, how beautiful! How pleased and happy we are in seeing her with the right of ruling all that belongs to us. She rules over our love and takes as much as she wants to love us. She also rules over our love to be loved. She rules over our wisdom and makes us reveal unspoken truths on our Supreme Being. She rules over our goodness and makes us pour this more than beneficial rain over all creatures. Her empire on our paternal lap is so sweet and powerful that we even say, Who can resist you, daughter? What you want, we want. Therefore, if you want all, never leave our will. Everything will be yours, and you will be all ours. After this, I kept on thinking about the divine will, its great wonders, how sometimes while crossing its sea, everything is serenity and profound peace. Its divine sun glows with light, but all is silent. And since its word is life, the new life it desires seems to be missing. While I was thinking of this, my sweet Jesus said, My daughter, the son of my will always speaks. The light is not silent, but speaks with its warmth its fecundity, and by impressing its various beauties into the soul living in it. Then, here I am, the bearer of its word, lowering myself to the human intellect, making easier and in simpler terms the height of the word of my fiat's light. Therefore, my will is never silent where it reigns, but speaks through light or through my word. 
However, when you are not attentive, you do not ruminate well. You don't eat, so you cannot digest what I tell you. Then you forget it and say I did not tell you anything. You must know that in every word or act done in my will, all centuries are embraced, all creatures are enclosed and present. Past and future do not exist for us and for who lives in our will. Even more, our truths contain all centuries, all times. They are the bearer of all creatures in the act of those who live in our will. And in that act, we find ourselves and the love and the glory that everybody should give us. For this reason, when the creature is about to operate and to receive the operating act of our fiat, all heaven bows in reverence, amazed to see a divine volition operating in this act. Therefore, we find everything in this act done by the creature in our will, our power that honors us as we deserve, our immensity that contains all and puts all at disposal, our wisdom, which sings to us the most beautiful notes, our divine being, the angels who praise us, the saints who enraptured repeat, holy, holy, thrice holy, the Lord our God, who works with such goodness and manifests his love. We can say that nothing is missing in the act of the creature. Our glory is complete. Our love finds sweet rest and perfect return. This is why we long so much for one who lives in our will. And it seems as if we had not done anything in creation because the greatest act we can do is missing. Our life repeating itself in the human act in which we will find ourselves, everything and everybody. There isn't good we won't give to our beloved creature, and there will not be love or glory that she will not give us. She will find everything she wants in us, and we in her. Daughter, wanting to give all, but being able to give only a small part of our goods, having to keep our love constrained and hampered, is a suffering for us. And all because our will as life is missing in the creature. Not being able to receive everything from her is the greatest pain of our creative work. Therefore, our love, our power, and wisdom, all our creative work, demand that the creature live in our will. The centuries will not pass away until our fiat will form its kingdom. And when it will reign, it will give all the goods and the dominion over them to the human generation. Therefore, pray, and may your life be a continuous act in our will to obtain the coming of its kingdom. Fiat. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 36, Part 6. Fiat.